Welcome everyone to edition five of TRL TV. After five days of frantic and thrilling action up there on the Gold Coast at the Magic Million Sales, I've got to say it could not be a better result for the owners of the Racing League. Everything is planning out very, very well so far. Early days, but we're certainly heading in the right direction and we have flown out of the barriers. CEO of the TRL joins us and Steve Brown, along with the head of our bloodstock and Mick Malone, has done an outstanding job. Steve, he deserves a wrap. No. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, no, of course he does. He's uh, He's been on the go now for uh, weeks and weeks and weeks and uh, we worked out he would have had 1,500 inspections and non-stop, non-stop work, uh, covered a lot of miles, uh, seeing a lot of horses before the sale uh, because we didn't know if, you, if we were actually going to be able to have an, a, uh, a live sale. So we wanted to have that edge on everyone. Uh, so we, you know, Mick really worked hard to see as many as he could before and uh, travelled everywhere for it. So uh, I, I, I equate bloodstock selection. It's a, it's a real art form. Uh, often Mick will say, I can't exactly tell you what it is when I see one. Um, and it is an art, and, and I really respect uh, that art. And hopefully uh, the owners in the racing league are going to be the beneficiaries of, uh, of what we're bought. Yeah, well, just to explain to everyone, and Mick, uh, good morning, mate. But as we say, uh, welcome. Uh, we told everyone on Friday night to keep an eye and give a big share, cheer in the Magic Millions, the $2 million Magic Million Classic for Terrells for Shapuera because we bought the the half-sister to Shapiro on day two of the sales. Um, and, geez, it worked out uh, fantastically well. So, well done. And what does it mean? Can you let our owners know what it actually means? Oh, well, it's like the pinnacle. Like the, the, the Magic Mirror is like the golden slipper. It's the, it's the, group, it's the group one of, of these sort of, you know, restricted listed races. And uh, to have, it, to have a, um, now a sister, uh, it, I would say if she walked back through the ring, um, tomorrow, you, you'd be sort of double what we paid. So, look, she's, it's just a, you can't ask for a better result. I've got a lot of envious buyers up here that couldn't believe that we, that, uh, that we'd have to fall on the TRL, but uh, we're just absolutely so excited about it. And she's just a beautiful girl. Yeah, so we should. She wasn't cheap at the time because she was such a great sort from a, such a terrific family. She was $360,000. But as you mentioned, I mean, it's all hypothetical, but if she went for the ring, uh, last night, after that uh, win by Shaquera, she probably she probably get double that. Correct. There's no, there's no doubt. That's that's the sort of money you'd be looking at. Sorry, Steve, to cut you off, but uh, yeah, no, that's right. She's th these these types of races are just like in office. Obviously, Shakira now just can go right on with it. You often see horses that that are, are sound enough to, and tough enough to race early and win a Magic Millions. Go right on with it, and, and they can be you know eventually slip away. Yeah, and if you look back at Shakiro, he won the Breeders' Plate as well, and that race has a right. mind-blowing record of uh, of star stadiums actually to come out of it, and uh, it'd be really unusual for for him to have won the Breeders' Plate, won the Magic Millions, and not go on with it. And, and it's a really important aspect for whoever ends up owning this filly uh, when when she sells, uh, and who knows how how she'll go as a racehorse herself, but. She's going to have that underlying intrinsic value. So when she sells, uh, when her career is over, that money that she sells for goes back to the uh, owners of that horse. So in a, on a, in a pro rider basis. So for what she's going to sell for when she finishes up, a lot will depend on what, what, how, just how good Shakira is um, and how she goes. But it's uh, it's a really important of it. There's now an asset value there. Yeah, it, which is a tremendous aspect, and that'll all be done at a public auction as well in those proceeds on a pro rata basis going back to the owners. Um, and then, look, after all the excitement of the racetrack, Mick, uh, it was on again. It's a long week up there, particularly for you, um, but it was back at the sales after the races, and Lot 900 went through the ring, a written tycoon, Bay Colton. There's no hotter side of written tycoon, and this is a very, very good farm off the uh, Highgrove property up in Toowoomba. Yeah, from a schnitzel mare again. Um, he just, he's a lovely, lovely colt. I'd been watching him all the way through. I knew he was on a few colt funds and uh, I just didn't know where he'd sit. And last night's sale was actually a little bit sticky from a from the vendor's point. Like there was, uh, you couldn't really get set on any one price. 
And Ronnie had really, who sold him Ron Gilbert, had really no real idea where he was going to be. And uh, uh, sadly, it was a little predictable that you could see that the horse wasn't going to sell in the ring. So we didn't bid. Um, Ronnie thought he was a 400, 450 sort of colt. And we just sat on our hands and then negotiated after. Um, there was a bit of pressure afterwards because um, there was another filly a bit later on that I wanted to wait for, um, a schnitzel filly with Barrymore. And uh, it was like whether we waited for the schnitzel uh, and I wandered down to the box and just looked around the corner and Ronnie had about four people talking to him. And I thought, well, if we wait for the schnitzel and uh, we certainly won't be getting the cult. So as it turned out, the schnitzel ended up making, I don't know what she made, like 450 or 480. 450, so yeah, 450. We missed so out we would have we missed her. Um, so it was the right move. It's good to have both options, but um, we just certainly lost him. And just quickly, when Mick mentioned that, um, those the stallion syndicates that get put together, Steve, they, they're, they're some high-profile people and farms that get together to look for the next big sire. So uh, we've done well there as well. Yeah, that's right, mate. I mean, and the reason why those big stallion syndicates are there is the, the prize of getting it right is enormous. Uh, you look at some of the... the uh, I guess the, the, the best example of, of recent is Ole Kirk. Uh, who won a couple of group ones in the spring, uh, a son of Written Tycoon as well. Uh, and he would be worth 20 to 30, Mick. Uh, if I, think, not more. I think he sold, I think he sold for 30 to 40. Yeah. Yeah. So there yeah. was a lot of money. So that's why these, these big stadium syndicates get together. Um, because when, when you do get the stadium, the returns are off the chart. And here we have also up. Or a son of Written Tycoon, same size as Ollie Kirk, and yeah. and you know the proceeds if we do jag a stallion, uh, remembering back to the owners of that horse. I think too with that cult last night, like I think a lot of those cult funds um, had exhausted themselves a little. Like it's quite amazing. It was quite amazing. Um, often you start at the yearling sale and your first day is usually your slowest, and they warm into the last day. Well, it was certainly different this year. Like you never really see clearance rate of, of 80, 88% on day one. And it's usually 75s. And then the ones that pass in, they get sold. But it just was so hot from day one. I do feel that a lot of guys had really exhausted their money. And uh, we, it just gave us an opportunity on a really good cult with a great pedigree from a good farm. Oh, yeah. Jerry Harvey would be terribly disappointed. He didn't crack the 200 million mark in sales. It was only 197 million uh, at an average of 253 per horse and an 87% clearance rate. So they are um, phenomenal figures, and uh, the world is gripped by something called COVID, but it doesn't seem to matter at a yearling sale. Mate, let's take you right back if we can. It seems a long time ago, Lime Country Farm and Greg and Joe Griffin, um, they had this beautiful um, Fastnet Rock, Alice Island yearling up for sale there, and uh, you did a bit of negotiating there. It seems a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah, it really, really does. It seems forever ago. But uh, again, by a, by a champion stand in Fastnet Rock, you can never go wrong when you're getting those types of horses around you and in a team. And uh, plenty of people walking past that and we bought him really, really well. So very, very happy with that colt. Um, lot 185 was the Piero Cool Schnitzel. And when you have a look at this, Steve, at the Piero Bay Colt, uh, from New Haven Park, again, we point out a very, very good farm we're buying off. That was 260000 too. Yeah, no, that was, uh, I think that was, we got a bit lucky there. Uh, as previously mentioned, uh, one of the market's best judges was on that uh, filly and, uh, oh, sorry, on that Colton, couldn't, couldn't actually find his buyer, couldn't get him on the line. So uh, that was some competition that wasn't there in the bidding rings that we didn't have to compete against because we did have, we did have, uh, yeah, another hundred plus thousand for that cult. You know, we got a bit unlucky on, on, on quite a few where mm. we were underbitter, but we got lucky on that one. Um, lot four, two, five. Now, this is the one that Peter Moody was actually on. Now, he's going to be, he's a Queenslander. He's going to be training for the big hustlers. But Mick, um, this Pride of Dubai cult, uh, Moody's already said he wants it. We picked it up for 165,000. That's including GST. Yeah, I was actually surprised when I turned over the page and Moody had actually written his name in there. So that's a, a pretty big, a big guarantee that he certainly wants to, to train. And that, that horse to me is just oozes two year old. He just looks like that speed horse that you could you could certainly see uh, in the race if everything went well. Like some of those like the cool snitzel colt beforehand 
a little bit more scope. Piero's, you don't have to chase him, although he's out of a stencil there. But uh, this bloke, just sharp, really, really sharp. So I'd say you know, we, we won't have to wait too long for him. Yeah, a lot 469 was the flying arty, um, which Richard Friedman was straight on the phone after that, saying they were on it, they liked it. Um, they'd love to have it in their stable for the New South Wales tycoons. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that'll be interesting to watch, uh, to see how the flying arties roll out, because remembering his youngest, the two-year-olds, uh, he's uh, already put his hand up big time and leads, leads the side table by winners. Uh, which has surprised uh, a few a few of them in the marketplace. Um, so owners of this cult will be uh, have a lot to watch in terms of seeing how the flying arties roll out, particularly given this mayor, our uh, reduced choice mayor, um, it, uh, Lalaya, is um, she won three herself, but she's already produced two stakes winners. Uh, Shamalia's five wins uh, for a group three and Empress Way six wins, uh, four in a row. So she can produce as the Redoute's mares so often do. Or I think that's a really exciting acquisition, that one. Uh, Del Ryan Undermitter as well there. Yeah, yeah which, is, which is good. It's great validation for all our owners of the, the racing league as well. Um, late on day three, mate, um, lot 638 was the Bay Philly, the headwater, uh, the mare Pfeiffer. Um, great blood in the veins, regally bred, really. Um, it came on the market and they sold it at cheapy for $80,000. you have done well. Yeah, I, I really, really like this horse. Again, a little bit like the Pride of Dubai. I don't think we'll be waiting long. She has that really look of um, Exceed to her, like obviously Headwaters by Exceed and Excel. And this this really just looks like Exceed and Excel. It looks like an Exceed, walked like an Exceed and Excel. Had, I had so many people come up, couldn't believe we bought it for that, I think. People thought that she'd make that sort of 140, 150, and uh, and probably her paid might not have warranted that, so they they just sort of sat off her, but uh, we didn't, and uh, yeah, rest is history. Um, let's move on to Friday, and we picked up three horses on the Friday. Uh, lot six, seven, three for those with the book is the the Hellbent Bay Cop of. We talk about good farms. There's no hotter farm in the last decade really than Yarraman Park. Two hundred and ten thousand dollars here Mick for the uh, the mayor queen of candy yeah he was the cult that we talked about I saw him as a weanling um and he's had yeah. those couple, a couple of preps which I actually like we were saying the other day TK you know they, these yeah often see a pinhook weanlings go on and become racehorses and I do think it has a little bit to do with they're quite they're matured early because they have that mm -hmm. weanling preparation um which would be sort of six weeks and that's just grooming and, and a little bit of hand walking and they lay a little bit more bone down Mentally, they either handle it well or they don't go to the weanling sale. When they do, they go to the weanling sale. And then I just think it sets them up for a really good career of, of, of handling those pressure situations well. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, and, of course, um, there's no rhyme or reason, Steve, while we've got some beautiful, uh, you know, expensive, I guess, or premium thoroughbreds. There's nothing to say the 80,000 one won't be the best of them all. It's The racing game's a funny game. Yeah, it's so often the way, isn't it? And uh, that's the beauty, I guess, about having six horses in your team and premium horses and being selected by someone who uh, has got a proven track record and knows what he's doing. Um, that gives you a chance to be playing at the top of this game, at the very top of the game. And, and that is the beauty about the uh, owning in the, in the racing league. I think we've been telling everyone too about the buzz about this first season sire, Mick, in, in Hellbent. Um, when you think about it, we've got two Hellbents, which is great, a, a Colt and also a Philly. And then, of course, you've got a So You Think, uh, which you know, many, many people think take time, but we know that they can come early. But um, So You Think was the most beautiful looking um, thoroughbred on the racetrack. And he stamped all his pedigree already as a producer of a Group 1 winner. Yeah, that's right. And he, he's, uh, he's just so prolifically proven, you know, and that is proven stands uh, who can just stand up year in, year out. Just they're the sort of horses you want to be having, especially in a, a league type scenario. And uh, I, I, like I said, I always ask people to go and have a bit of a look at his video. Just the action's unbelievable. Just so fluent. And I always like to think a horse just walk like a Jamaican does down the street. You know, that's how I look. That's how I sort of evaluate what a, what a yearling every little part of the move when they when they walk they use their from their tail to their nose they just everything just rolls along like they're rolling so i love that horse and, and very excited 
and you know it's funny with the with the value of a horse um you know i i go around obviously looking at you know like we said around 1500 horses i try not to get too involved in the pedigree too much to start with because it's something that steve and utk will, will, will all sit down and have our meetings and we'll delve into that pedigree and knock the ones off we don't think i try not to get into and even with the hellbent shakira who we'll talk about I didn't really focus too much on Shakira. I just wanted to buy a nice horse. So it's not about, it's not so much about the pedigree. It's about the type that you love. That's my job. And then the rest of it, we sit down and delve into the pedigree. So price is not important from that point. The the, the headwater, I liked as much as I liked the next one we bought that might have been 200000 Yeah, that's right. So that's the Bay of the Brown Colt we're talking about. Lot 826, the so you think for 160000 Okay, just, so just, just on him, TK. Remembering that uh, the Lindsay Park have already put their hand up. They were desperate oh. to see that horse in their stable. Uh, whether it ends up that way will depend on the draft. But uh, they came straight up to Mick as soon as the hammer fell and said, "That's got to come to us. That's the one we want." Yeah. Which, um, again, that's really, really good validation as well. They can't have them all. And again, it's going to be up to the owners of the Racing League, uh, what horses are drafted into your particular side, but we'll be doing another webinar on the draft. We'll explain that all in detail um, later this week. Um, Lot 792, Merchant Navy is another horse with um, a good buzz up there, Mick, and we were lucky enough to get a Bay Colt from Merchant Navy, Lot 792. And you said, oh, in fact, we missed out, didn't we? That was a must-have, but that was the one you missed out on. Sorry to bring that up. Yeah, no, thanks for that. That was really enjoyable. Uh, no, he was he was certainly the horse we talked about for a long, long time. Um, and and we actually rushed around to Kieran, who bought, um, to try and do a deal with Kieran. And uh, no, no cigar. So he he's one that's missed. But I think you can't be worried about the ones you missed because who yeah. knows? I think we, we, we've okay. shopped well. But certainly nice horse. And uh, I'll look forward to watching him. And that's something everyone can do. You know, you can follow all these horses along the way. And the one thing about racing is it's not, it's not just about your own horse, it's about everything. I, I was going to say, but I'm not that man tugging their tail if they are, um, if you see them at the racetrack. <laughs> 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 Kieran was, yeah. uh, was he the biggest buyer at the sales? Uh, well, he's, he's got the biggest hairdo. Yeah. <laughs> um, he was I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but he certainly would have been close to it. I actually spoke to him just showing how healthy this industry is. On, on Thursday afternoon, he'd had 33, he'd bought 33 yearlings Thursday afternoon with two days to go. And they'd bought two late on Thursday. I had dinner with them and they'd sold every single yearling. It's just quite amazing how the market's just absorbing these horses. And uh, yeah, it's crazy, crazy. Well, great, great, crazy. Yeah, I'd give people an insight there too. And he had that one that you went over to um, inquire about. He had it sold within what, a couple of minutes? Yeah, I think a lot it took of the me reason, three minutes to walk from. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of the reason he has sold out is because he is their stable is on fire. He's a fun yeah. guy. He's uh, a bit of a larrikin. He's an unbelievable horseman. It's a pretty unique sort of uh, offering that uh, he has with his stable, and uh, we're we're really lucky that, um, or for the big hustlers, for the owners in the big hustlers. That um, you know, he's part of that team. You, you're going to have a ball uh, racing with Kieran Ma. Um, I hate to tell you this, but I was right again. Um, 37 horses he bought, Kieran Ma, um, for a gross of over 11 million dollars, uh, and an average of three, and an average of 300,000 Kieran Ma. So, yeah, um, we're lucky to have him in the big hustlers team. Um, Gay Waterhouse, another big buyer, 26. So she, she bought the second most amount of horses, um, Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott, who, again, we've got training for us, Steve, in the racing league. Yeah, it's uh, it's all coming together nicely. There's some some of the best of the best trainers, and, you know, we've so far managed to secure some really exciting bloodstock. So, uh, you know, we're really happy with the way that uh, the racing league is coming together and... Uh, Next, the next two weeks is going to be a heap of fun. This draft process, which will take everyone through uh, in, the, in the next few days, uh, we're going to aim for that draft being um, towards the end of January. It's key. It's absolutely key. We'll, we'll have multiple, we'll, we'll probably have two or three draft phases. But this first phase of the draft, you've seen the, the horses that are there. Uh, it's now up to the owners to vote. Uh, which ones they want, and then uh, yeah, it's going to be a heap of fun. Uh, Mick, um, 
thanks for giving your time uh, right throughout the week. You've done a cracking job, mate. We really do appreciate it as owners of the Racing League. You must be seeing horses in your sleep. There's no doubt about that. Um, and now it's um, pack up and come home. Yeah, correct, mate. We'll get home and uh, get ready for the next round of sales that we're all sort of ahead to. And uh, no, it's been it's been a really good a really good ten days up here on the coast. And I uh, appreciate everyone's support and and look for really look forward to the future. The, the raps can come when we get the winners. Yeah, that'll be nice. That'll be nice. I think we should also now explain to people, TK, that um, these horses are off to Emmeron Park yep. uh, in New South Wales. Uh, Mick, as from a person that put so much effort into buying these horses, the next phase of their education and care is really important. Do you want to tell people why Emmeron Park is our uh, prefer, preferred choice there and, and what Shannon is as, a, as, a, as an operator? Yeah, very much so. Um, so what Shannon is, is like the horses, a lot of the horses have already arrived down there. Obviously, the colt last night, not as yet. Um, she takes videos when they get off the truck, which she sends to me, talks me through how they've travelled. But... Now, now what we'll do is she'll just have a bit of a look at them over the next few few uh, weeks or a couple of weeks. Just have a look at the ones that could be broken in earlier and ones that just need a bit more time. Um, I'll, I'll visit the farm probably in the next 10 days as well and we'll just go through them all. But Shannon, Shannon is just such a good horsewoman. She runs, she runs a great establishment and the horses mean as much to her as they do to, to us and everyone in the racing league. And uh, so they'll be just broken in probably in dribs and drabs over the next sort of five to six weeks. Um, I like to just give them 10 days off and break them in. I think if you give them a bit too much longer than that, they start to, I don't know, they're just in a really good frame of mind to be just take that next step and breaking in so different to what they've had, they just really enjoy it. And then others just might be a little bit flat for a while and and just not look look to lay down more. We'll just give those a bit more time. But Emron Park, I've been been dealing with Emron for a long time and Shannon, now she has awesome facilities. She's, she's, yeah, her place is really safe and uh, Steve, we've had great results with her. Yeah, and you'll get, get ready to uh, through the passion, the genuine passion she has for these animals. You'll get to know them as, you know, their personalities, they're all different. She brings that out and shares it with you on, with videos and uh, get ready to fall in love with the individuals because they're um, yeah, they're all, they're all individuals and, and Shannon really brings that out and shares it. It's a, it's a great part of the experience, that sort of kindergarten experience and watching them learn and, and, and yeah, you'll, you'll love that part and you'll love having um, Sh- Shannon uh, sharing that with you. Yeah, she's a great communicator, there's no doubt about that and a terrific horse person as well. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Mick. That's TRL TV. Uh, remember, we'll keep everyone notified about the draft and the process and, and how you choose your horses for, for your particular team. Thanks again, everybody. Well done, TK. Well done, Mick. Thank you, guys. guys. Thank you. Well done, guys.